I've got three clips here lined up in DaVinci Resolve. Actually, it's the same clip three times, but the audio is on three separate tracks. Each track has the same plugins with the same settings, the same compressor with the same settings, the same EQ with the same settings. They're all on mono tracks, but when we go back and listen to all three clips, one after another, you're going to hear a difference. We're going to talk about why that is in a second, but first, if you are new to the channel, hi, my name's Jay. I teach how to make better videos in DaVinci Resolve with a recent heavy emphasis on the audio side because I've recently discovered that's probably what I should have been doing all along. It's kind of my bread and butter. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. We're just going to give these clips a listen and then we're going to talk about video it. setup sitting here at my desk. I've got my camera in front of me. I've got my Scarlett Studio condenser mic, which I've kind of been testing out as a new podcasting and vocal and making videos microphone. This is just normal setup, nothing special, typical audio that I work with on every single video that I make. So this is my typical video setup sitting here at my desk. I've got my camera in front of me. I've got my Scarlett Studio condenser mic, which I've kind of been testing out as a new podcasting and vocal and making videos microphone. This is just normal setup, nothing special, typical audio that I work with on every single video that I make. So this is my typical video setup sitting here at my desk. I've got my camera in front of me. I've got my Scarlett Studio condenser mic, which I've kind of been testing out as a new podcasting and vocal and making videos microphone. This is just normal setup, nothing special, typical audio that I work with on every single video that I make. Okay, first of all, let me just get this out of the way before you start attacking me in the comments. I know the compressor on this was horribly strong. I, I would never do that in a regular video, but it was going to help me illustrate the point that I'm trying to make, okay? So don't, don't attack me in the comments. I understand the compressor way too much, but there was a purpose behind it. Second, did you hear what was going on there. Everything was different. Maybe not at first glance, but if you really listen to it, you'll hear that the compressor felt like it was a lot stronger in the first two clips than it was in the third. The the sibilance was different between the three. The breath control was different between the three. Everything was different. All these little subtle changes that added up to actually a pretty drastic difference between the three versions of the clip. Now, this all has to do with something called order of operations. I've done a video on order of operations before, but that hell that that had to do with the entirety of DaVinci Resolve and how it processes footage and audio and all of that stuff. Today we're talking about the order of operations in the Fairlight page itself, which can actually be tweaked depending on how you need it to work. See, order of operations determines the order in which the Fairlight page processes your audio. If we come into our mixer, and if you don't see your mixer, you can just click up here, mixer right there. In between your track effects and your effects is this little section called order. And this is where you can tell DaVinci Resolve, hey, on this track, process my audio this certain way. So in this first track, we're processing our EQ and then our dynamics and then our effects. And then in the second track, we got dynamics first, effects, and then EQ. And then we've got EQ, then effects, and then dynamics. And if we actually click on that little window, you'll see we have six different options here. So we've got a lot of different ways that we can process our audio. Now we're gonna talk about how we can determine that because honestly, this is the first thing that you should determine before you even start mixing is the order in which you want the Fairlight page to process your audio. We're going to talk about how to determine the order that you need, but first you may have noticed in this video, in all of my other videos, I've got a lot of like zooming into parts of my screen and panning around and a lot of animated titles and things to help you see and understand what I'm doing in DaVinci Resolve. And all of that is made possible by today's sponsor, Motion VFX. Now, if you've never heard of Motion VFX before, then you probably have never seen one of my videos before because I talk about them all the time. Motion VFX is this huge library of effects and motion graphics and titles. They've got stuff like LUTs and stock elements, just stuff that's going to make making videos easier and faster. In fact, that's why I started using them in the first place. I'm a busy dude. I make videos, I produce music, I 
mix and master music. I, I do a whole bunch of stuff. And that's on top of having a family and two kids and a, just a very, very busy schedule. So when I make videos, I need to make them look good and I need to make them look good quickly. That's where Motion VFX comes in. It's all super easy to use. You find something that you like on their site, you click it, you buy it, it gets sent to the M installer plugin, which is on your computer. And when it gets sent there, you just click install. It does all the work for you. And then the next time you open DaVinci Resolve, it's right there. You can drag and drop everything that they have onto, the, onto your timeline. And it's just going to do the job. Tweak a couple settings, you're done. And the best part is there's no subscriptions. None at all. You see something, you like it, you buy it, you're done. You don't have to pay for it again. It's great. Although if they had some kind of all access subscription, I'd probably get it. So if you're looking for a way to take your videos to the next level, but get it done quickly, then click the link in the description. Check out Motion VFX today. I promise you will not be disappointed. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. And now let's talk about order of operations. So how do we figure out the order in which we want Fairlight to process our audio? Because there really aren't any rules and technically you could do it any way you want and you could probably go your entire career without ever clicking that little order window and you'd probably be fine. But, but if you're obsessed with audio like I am and you've been training your ear through music and video and all this stuff for like over three decades like I have, then this stuff becomes really, really important. So I can't really give you like a hard and fast rule of, you know, when to change that order thing, but I can tell you how I would do it. And that's with a problems first mentality. Whenever I sit down to mix audio or do sound design, I listen to the raw audio first and I determine any problems that I'm going to have to take care of. Is there a bunch of noise or reverb or mouth clicky sounds or really, really intense sibilance or breaths? Then I will probably do effects first because I need to take, I want to take care of those problems before I start EQing and compressing. Because once you start compressing things, if there's a bunch of like mistakes and just bad stuff, and you start compressing it, it gets harder and harder to clean up. So I'm always going to look for things that I need to clean up first. On the other hand, if I, for some reason, got pristine audio in my recording, which we should all be aiming for, but if I got that and there's actually no noise and no reverb, and for some reason, the guy had, you know, whoever I'm recording has, you know, no mouth clicky sounds and the sibilance isn't too bad, then... I'll maybe listen for, okay, is there muddiness? Is there some resonant frequencies that are making it a little bit harsh to listen to? In that case, I'll go for EQ first. And then on the other hand, if everything is great, if it sounds good, if there's no like noise and reverb and all that stuff that I would take care of with plugins and there's no real like messy frequencies that I need to take care of with EQ, then I'll go ahead and compress first because when I start compressing, I want it to already sound good. All right, let's reset a little bit here. We're going to delete these two clips and we'll go ahead and we'll just delete our empty tracks. Boom. So now we're dealing with this one track. We're going to delete all of our plugins and we're going to do a for instance because this is the problem that I have with the Fairlight page. Remember at the beginning of the video, I told you there's a problem that I have with the Fairlight page and I want to kind of showcase it, right? Let's say I just got this clip in. I listened to it. I noticed there's some noise. Okay. So I'm going to set this to process effects and then EQ and the dynamics because I want to take care of that noise before I do my EQ and my compression, right? Cool. No problem. We'll go ahead and we'll throw my favorite noise reduction plugin ever, Clarity VX Pro Mono, into there. And we'll go ahead and do our settings, whatever. Cool, noise reduction is taken care of. Now I wanna do my EQ. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do my EQ, boom. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my compressor. See, I told you this thing was like set crazy, but whatever. So I do my compression, cool, done, right? Well, no, because now that I have done my compression, that compression has made the sibilance in my voice a little bit too prominent. Now I want to throw in a de -esser. but because of my order of operations, that de is actually going to come before my EQ and my compression, which is going to give me a sound that I don't necessarily want. 
Not always, but it's a possibility. Now, the way to avoid all of this would be to not use the dynamics and not use the EQ and just use a EQ plugin or a dynamics plugin. DaVinci Resolve Fairlight does not have this dynamics processor or this EQ as a drag and drop plugin. So if I'm working with only stock plugins in Fairlight, I'm kind of screwed. And saying I'm kind of screwed is like, Really, really dramatic. I get it. It's really dramatic. It's honestly not that bad unless you are super, super picky like me and and every little tiny thing that's off drives you crazy like me. Otherwise, it's not a huge, huge deal. But if you are like me and you're kind of nuts about audio, then I would highly suggest picking up a third-party EQ, third-party compressor, third-party de right? Because with those three, you can pretty much get anything done that you want to get done. And I personally recommend Waves Audio. They've got a ton of EQs. They've got a ton of compressors and de and just noise removal, everything. In fact, this noise removal plugin here, this is from Waves Audio, and it's absolutely fantastic. Like I said, it's my favorite noise reduction plugin ever. They'll be linked below. They're not sponsoring this video because Motion VFX is sponsoring it, but uh, they'll be linked below. You should check them out, pick out a few plugins just so you have something on hand so you can do things in whatever order you want. So question of the day, be honest in the comments. Have you ever played around with this order of operations before? Have you ever even clicked the order? Did you even know that that order window was there? Let me know in the comments. And thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to go out and make stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one.